We continue now at the top of Daf Mem Dalit Amid Aleph and Mesach Sota. This is Sota Daf 44a. The Gemara continues with a statement in the name of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. Mes Tofes Arba Amos Latuma, a corpse, a dead body. It takes four Amos in terms of Tuma. Rashi explains, Mes Tofes Arba Amos Latuma, Chachamim Gozru. The Chachamim made a Gezeira, Shea Mes Metami, Kola Nichnas Ba Arba Amosav. That the Mes is Metami, anyone who comes into our Dalit Amos, four Amos within the Mes, is going to become Tame on a Durabonan level. Kedeshalo Yargilo Ochle Taharos Likarivlo. This way, people who are trying to eat things in purity, they're not going to come so close. And then you're going to have a situation again. If you come too close, you might have a situation where you're over the mace and it became, it becomes a situation of Tomas Ohel. There's a concern he might stretch out his hand, create an Ohel and not realize. And so that's why the Rabbonin made this Gezeira that a mace is Tofes Dalet Amos for Tomo. And the Gemara continues, Vitana Tuna, and we have a Tana that supports this as well. Rashi says, Vitana Tuna Vachain Toni Tana Didon Bemishna Hanishnas Beinenu Bebeis Hamedrish Beseder Taharos. That's what the Mishnah says that is learned in Seder Taharos. It says the same idea. And the Mishnah says as follows, Chatzar HaKever. Let's say you have a situation of a courtyard of a gravesite. Ha'omid Besochatar. If somebody stands within that Chatzar, he's tar, he's pure. And it has to be that that area has an area of Dalit Amos. Divri Beis Shammai, that's the opinion of Beis Shammai. Beis Hillel Omer Beis Hillel say Arbo Tvachim. It has to have an area of four Tvachim. And the Gemara continues, Now when is this true? When the entrance is from above. But let's say the entrance to this area is from the side. So then everybody agrees it has to have a space of Dalit Amos. Now the Gemara says, In which direction are you going? This seems the opposite. It should actually be worse when you have a situation where the Pesach is Milmala. On the contrary. In a situation where the entrance is on the side, so it's possible for the person to avoid the Tumma and to go out. But in a situation where the entrance is from above, so maybe you have a situation there where it's going to be impossible possible to avoid creating Tomasoel. And so the Gemara says, you're right, we have to change the, the Bamed Devar Mamurim. Ella, rather, Bamed Devar Mamurim, when is it true? And the, and the contrary, Shepischem and Atzad, when the entrance is on the side. Avo Pischem il Mala, but if the entrance is from above, so then already it's Arba Amos, it's going to be Dalet Amos. In that situation, we're more Machmir. Vahani Mili, and the Gemara now says, that's all true. This entire discussion that we're having here in this Mishnah is Chatzar kever. That's all true when you're talking about the courtyard of a kever. The Messiah Mechitzah, so that has clear boundaries. Avol Meis Bialma, but it sounds like it's saying from the Mishnah exactly what we said above, that if you have a corpse just in general, so tough is, so then when you have Dalet Amos, within Dalet Amos of that mace, there is going to be a situation of Tumah Midra Bonon. And Rashi explains, Chatzar HaKever, again, you have this courtyard by a gravesite, Shalifnei HaMa'or, in other words, the courtyard is in front of the cave where they're burying the dead, Kedo Amar Seder Binyan HaKvaris Bababa Basra, in Baba Basra they talk about the design of the areas of the graves in the caves, Shaosin Ma'oros Kedolos Shal Sheish Al Sheish, they would have these large caves, V'chofer Bekos L'Sea Saviv, Kuchin Aruchos Kemidas HaMais, and they would actually dig into the walls, areas where they would put the mace, V'soch V'lotochan, and the mace would go into the holes within this cave, V'hamma and the cave had a had a covering, had a roof. And then you, they made a, a they made they dug out a hole, a wide hole at the side of the cave. And there was like an entryway over there. That guma that that depression by the entrance of the cave that's called the chutzar akever, the courtyard of the cave. And so the halach is, again, ha'omid besochotar. If a person's in that courtyard area, so to speak, so then tar, the person is pure. Kal makam sho'omid batar. Any area in that chatzar hakever is tar. The cave in Demara chaluka himana, the reason is because since the cave is considered a distinct area from the chatzar hakever, umechitzosen, ikaros, there are clear walls, there are clear boundaries. Lo gazer abonin b'meisim shebesocha, sheyitfasu dalet amos vivosah. The point over here is that abonin didn't make a gazer in this case. We don't say that the corpses, that dalet amos, Around the corpses are going to be Tomei, Letzad HaMa'ora, Dechi Gozer HaBonon Arba Amos, B'meis HaMutol Ba'avir, because the Rabbonon only said Dalet Amos. By a mace, that's if it's in an area, in an open area. Chagon L'Malei, it's Al-Gag HaMa'ora, Kedei L'Harchikas HaAdam, let's say it's near the roof of the cave, that's to keep the person away, Milahal Al-Ala Tumah, from creating an oil on the Tumah. Avalkan Yesh Hekar, but here where you have a clear uh, demarcation between the area where you are and where the mace is, it's not going to be a problem. And so then the Mishnah said, let's say you're uh, the Chatzar Akever again, Ha'omid Besoch is Tar, 
Beis Shammai said it has to be at least Dalet Amos, meaning who the Chashiva Makam Liatzma. The Chatzar is only considered an independent place, a Makam Chashav on its own, if it's for Amos. Avopachas Mikan, but if it would be a smaller area than Dalet Amos, Batzala Eitzel Hamar, it would actually be nullified to the cave. It would be like it's part of the cave. Velo Chashiva Lamahavi Makam Liatzma wouldn't be its own location. It wouldn't be its own place, and you can't be lenient in that situation. Well, Beis Hillel Omer Rabba Tzvachim, Beis Hillel is more lenient. They say even if it's just for Tzvachim, Havi Makam Chashav Bechol Duchta. That's considered in an important area if it's just Dalit Tvachim. And then we said, Bamedavar Mamur and Beis Hillel Amrule. So now the Gemara, now Rashi explains, Beis Hillel now is saying the Bamedavar Mamur, and when is this true? Kisha Pisgah Shel Chatzar Lamala. Shein La Knisas Madron Bimalus Menatzad, meaning you don't have like a slanted steps from the side to go in. And like a Shayord and La Kofts in Law, rather the idea over here is, is that when you go down to it, Kofts in Law, Chashol Mitocha Metafis Viola, you have a situation where you kind of jump down or you have to climb straight up. Well, the common parach ibcham is Now, the Gemara is going to ask this should be the exact opposite. And that's what the Gemara does ask. It seems exactly backwards. Rashi brings a Mesachas Brachas where Lai is used in this fashion. And the point is as follows Ibcham Mistabra, the reverse is more logical. If you have it from the side, meaning that this Chatzar area, it's like a slanted way that you're able to leave along the sides. So then we could say, since the Rabbanan are not strict, they don't make a gazer if you have a, a situation of mechitzas nikaros, of a clear demarcation. You could say over there, it makes sense. You don't need Dalet Amos as long as the chatzer area is for Tvachim, that's enough. If he stands there, he's tar. No reason to make him tame. He doesn't need to kind of climb up in a way where his hands are outstretched. Then he'll have a problem of oil. Let's add Pesach. It's easy for him to slowly be able to go out along the exit. So therefore, it makes more sense to be lenient when it's Minhatsad. But Milmala, but if it's from above, meaning if you have a situation of a small space of just four Tvachim, and you have this concern that he's going to create an Oel, he's going to end up creating an Oel over the mace, Elim Kane, unless Mahal Al Chalala Pesach. Again, the only way he'll be able to exit is if he's on the Oel. Is, is if he creates this kind of an oil. And so that's why the Gemara said, indeed, that actually is correct. When it's Pischem and Hatzad, that's when we can be lenient and say the area only has to be four Tvachim. But if it's Pischem and Mala, then you're going to need four Amos. And then the Gemara concluded to show that this shows the idea of Meis Tofes Arba Amos, Vahani Mili Hashta Mahadur Lefrushe Seyata Mehocha. Now the Gemara goes on to explain why this Mishnah supports what we just said. Midi Itzrech Lemisni Haomed Lesocho Tar Shmami Nohani Mili Chatzar Akever. The Messiah Mechit Sasa the Mar Lechudeu the Chatzar Lechudeu. You see from this Mishnah, we're only being lenient. There's only a possibility of leniency by a Chatzar Akever where there's clear demarcations between it and the Ma'ara, it and the cave. But let's say you just have a, a corpse in general. Modu Beisila, then Beisila would admit everyone would agree the Tafis Arba Amos that there be a Chumra as long as you're within Arba Amos. Meet Israel Chlamis Neomi Lasocha Tar the Baal Malo the Baal Malo Gazer Lamali Lashmin Hachad the Tar. Obviously, there must be a Gazer in a general case. Because if there was no gazer in a general case, why do you have to talk over here about the fact that we're lenient that we say tar? And so again, you see from this Mishnah that a mace is tofes dalad amos when it comes to tuma. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Mio isha sher eras isha v'chulu. Again, if you have an individual, if you have a man who betrothed the woman, so then he also is exempt from going to war. And the Gemara says, Tanu Rabbon and the Rabbis taught, Asher Eras Echad HaMa'ores HaSabesula. We learn out from the Pasuk of Asher Eras whether the person betrothes a Besula, a virgin, V'Echad HaMa'ores HaSalmona, or whether he betrothes a widow, V'Echad Shomer HaSyavam, or whether he's awaiting, you have a situation where he's awaiting Yibam, V'Afilu Chamisha Achin, even if it's a situation of five brothers, Umeis Echad Mehem B'Melcham, and one of them dies in war, so you have a situation of Shomer HaSyavam, but we don't know yet which brother she will be with. Kulon Chos, and all of them return, that's all considered a situation of a person, Asher Eras Isha. And so therefore we say in all of those situations, the person is exempt from the war. And the Brisa continues, Lo Lakach Velo Lakacha. It could have said Lo Lakach. Instead it says Lo Lakacha. Again, he betrothed the woman, but he didn't yet take her for a wife. 
And so we learn from there that's an, that's an exclusion. Pratli al a Kohen Gadol, that comes to exclude a widow marrying a Kohen Gadol. These are all prohibited relationships, so there's no exemption. Grusha ve Chalutza le Kohen Hadyot, a divorce or a Chalutza, marrying a Kohen Hadyot, marrying a Kohen Hadyot. Mamzeris or Nesina le Yisrael, if you have a Mamzeris or a Nesina marrying a Yisrael or Bas Yisrael or a Jewish girl marrying a Mamzer or a Nesin, marrying a Mamzer or a Nesin. All of these are situations of prohibited relationships, and there is no exemption. But the Gemara continues, Let us say that this Raisa is not following Rabbi Yossi HaGlili. To eat Rabbi Yossi HaGlili, because if we're following Rabbi Yossi HaGlili, but Rabbi Yossi HaGlili says, What does it mean that the person is afraid of the war? It actually means that he's afraid of his sins. He's afraid of, from his Averis. And over here, he should be exempt for a different reason. In all of these situations, you have a prohibited relationship. He's afraid of the Averis that he has committed, so he should be exempt for that reason. But we said above, he's not exempt. And so therefore this seems not like Rabbi Yossi Aglili, but the Gemara says not necessarily Afilu Tamer Rabbi Yossi Aglili. You could even say that it does follow the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Aglili, Kedarabba, because it follows how Rabbi explained, Amar Rabbi, because Rabbi said, Leolam and Ochayv, that the person is not actually Chayv in these prohibited relationships, Ad Sheyivl, until there's actually an act of relations. And so therefore, just because you have a situation where, the, let's say, the person is betrothed in a prohibited relationship, but it really wasn't yet an Aveira, it's really not yet a person who's afraid from his Aveira, because he, he didn't yet have the act of relations in this prohibited relationship. Matam lo yikach, and Rab explains, what's the reason? How do we know? What's the reason why he's not supposed to take these women as, uh, uh, these women as, a, as a, this woman as a wife? Mishum lo yichalo, the reason is because he shouldn't profane, meaning the act of relations. That's the reason not to take. Mishum hachi no lok, and that's why there's no malchus ad sheyivl until there actually is an act of relations. And so therefore, again, we could be following Rabbi Yossi Aglili over here, but you have a situation where the Avera wasn't really Really yet committed, even though it's a prohibited relationship, and that's why he's not exempt from the war due to the Averus which he has committed. And the Gemara continues, Tanu Rabbon and the rabbis taught, Asher Bona, Asher Nota, Asher Eras, the Pasuk says he builds, he ta- talking about the building of the house and then the planting of the vineyard, and then he betrothes a woman, and it says it in that order, and the Gemara says, Limda Torah Derech Eretz, the Brisa says the Torah here is teaching us the proper way, Shivna Adam Bayis, first a person should build a house, Vita Kerem, then he should plant a vineyard, V'yachakach Yisuish, and after that he should marry a woman. V'yaf Shlomo Amar Bechachmoso, and even Shlomo, he said this in his wisdom, the it says you prepare your work, you prepare what you're going to do in the field, and you build your house. And what does that Pasuk mean? When it says, that refers to first having a house. When it talks about the Sada Zekerem, that refers to having a vineyard. And then when it talks about building your house, Zuisha, that's referring to, to taking a wife, and therefore Shlomo, in his, in his wisdom, also advised to do things in this order. And the Gemara gives other explanations of this Pasuk in Mishle, Davar Acher, another explanation, Hachin Bachutz Malach Tucha Zemikra, the first part of the Pasuk refers to the fir- that first you should learn Psukim, Viatata Besod Eloch Zemishna, then the second part of the Pasuk is you should learn Mishna, Acher Uvanitza Beisach, and the final part of the Pasuk is Gemara, that refers to the learning of Gemara. Davar Acher, another explanation, Hachin Bachutz Malach Tucha Zemikra U Mishna, the first part of the Pasuk refers to Psukim and Mishnais, Viatata Besod Eloch Zemara, the second part refers to Gemara, Acher Uvanitza Beisach, and the third part of the Pasuk, Elu Maisim Tovim, refers to good deeds. Rabbi Eliezer ben Oshel Rabbi Yossi Aglili Yomer, Rabbi Eliezer, the son of Rabbi Yossi Aglili, says, another explanation, Hachin Bachutz Malach Tocha Zemikra Umishna Ugamara. The first part of the Pasuk refers to Pesuk Mishnais and Gemara. Viat Tabisad Eloch Elu Maisim Tovim, the second part of the Pasuk refers to good deeds. Achro Vanisa Beisach Adrosh V'Kabel Schar. And then the last part of the Pasuk refers to the idea that you darshan and you receive re- reward when you expound upon that which you learned. And the Gemara continues that the two dots, Vielu Shein and Chosrin Habona Beishar Vachulu, the Mishnah said the following do not return. They're not exempt from war. Let's say they, they build a, a gateway, a gate area. And then the Mishnah went on to say that if a person takes down a house and then just rebuilds it the same as it was before, there also there's no exemption. And so the Gemara says, Tan, it was taught, Im Hosef Bodimus Echod, Choser, if he adds even one row to the house, he expands it at all, so then he actually does return from the war, he actually is exempt. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, Rabbi Eliezer says, Even somebody who builds a brick house in Sharon, he wouldn't return. And the Gemara explains, Tan, it was taught, 
Shino so Pamayim Veshavua. The reason is that every seven years, twice every seven years, they would have to rebuild it because it was not a stable situation when you built a, bri- a brick house in this area, and therefore it's not considered enough of a permanent structure to exempt the individual from war. And the Gemara continues with the two dots. The Mishnah said, Vielu Shein Zazen Mimakom, and the following people don't even move from their place. They don't have to participate at all in the war. Bonabai is Chodesh Vechanacho Vechulo, and then it gave a bunch of cases. For example, let's say a person built a new house and it's just within the first year, or he actually married a woman and it's within the first year. And the Gemara says, Tanu Rabban and the rabbis taught, Isha Chadosh, it says a new wife. Ainli Ela Isha Chadosh, I only know a new wife, meaning she's a virgin. Almano Grushmina, and how do we know this is true even by a widow or a divorcee? Let's say it's the first year of marriage. The Pasuk says a wife, it doesn't matter what kind of what, uh, what kind of wife, in all of these situations in the first year, there's going to be a complete exemption. If that's the case, why does it say Isha Chadosha? It means Mishachad Shalo, it has to be at least some, a wife who's new to him. That excludes somebody who remarries a woman that he divorced, that's not a new wife to him, and that would not create this exemption. And the Gemara continues, Tanur Rabban and the rabbis taught, Lo Yetze Batsov, it says that such a person can't go out into the army. Again, let's say he's in the first year with the house or with the marriage. Yachol Batsov, Hudelo Yotza, Aval Yasbik Mayim, Wimazan, Vyasak, and Adrachim. Now, I might think he doesn't go out to war, but he has to help out. He has to provide water and food, and he has to fix the roads. Talmud Lomer, so the Pasuk says, Velo Yavar, all of the Choldover. It says he doesn't have to participate whatsoever in these last cases in the Mishnah. Yachol Shani Marbaf, Abona Bais, Velo Chanacho, Nata Karen, Velo Chilolo, Erasisha, Velo Lakach. And I might think I should even include, let's say again, the earlier cases in the Mishnah. He built a house and he didn't dedicate it or a vineyard and he didn't start using it or he betrothed the woman, but there was no marriage yet. Maybe over there also he gets a total, complete exemption. Tom and Loma, the Pasuk says, Allah. And Allah teaches us Allah yatom avir, meaning on these cases that we listed towards the end of the Mishnah, that's where he doesn't have to do anything. He has a total exemption. But in other situations, they're not completely exempt. In these other situations that we listed towards the beginning of the Mishnah, so there's not a complete exemption. Now, if it already said in these cases where there's a complete exemption that he's totally exempt from any participation, why does it also say he doesn't have to go out to the war? Of course he doesn't have to go out to the war. He doesn't even have to assist in other minor ways. And to that, the Gemara says, That's to say that if he goes out to war, he actually transgresses, he violates two negative commandments because now he's participated in the war as part of the actual war efforts. Plus, he's also violated Lo Yavor because he's participated, of course, in a minor way. He participated even more than a minor way. And so therefore, the reason is, again, that he should transgress two negative commandments if he goes out to war in this situation. And the Gemara continues with the mission of Yosvu HaShochim Ladaber Elam V'Gomer. The Pasuk says that the officers, they continue to speak to the people. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Rabbi Akiva says, Hayare V'Rach Aleva, when the Pasuk says that the person is afraid, he's exempt from the war, Kimashmo, it's exactly what it sounds like. She'eno Yachol Amad B'Kishra Melchama V'Liro Cherev Shlufa. We're talking about somebody who's just not able to be part of the war, he's too afraid, he's not able to see a drawn sword, and therefore he's exempt according to Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Yossi Aglili Omer, Rabbi Yossi Aglili says, Hayori V'Rach Aleva, what does it mean when it says somebody who's afraid is exempt? Zeham Esiyori Min Ho'Averu Shabiyodah, we're referring to somebody who's afraid because he has committed Averus. Lafikach, and therefore Tulsa Lo Ator Es Kolelu Sheyachzer Beglolin. The Torah says all these other cases of exemptions, that way you can't identify why this person is leaving. You can't say that he's leaving because of Averus, because it could be he has one of these other situations which exempts him from the war. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Rabbi Yossi says, Almona Lakoin, Gadol Grusha Vechalutz Lakoin, Had Yod Mamzerus and Asinali Israel, Bas Israel and Mamzer and Asin, all the cases of prohibited relationships, a widow to a coin, Gadol, a Grusha, a divorcee, and a Chalutz to a coin, Had Yod, a Mamzerus or an to a Jewish man or a Jewish woman to a mamzer and a sin. Those are all examples of cases of the yare v'rachalevav. That's the person who's afraid. He's afraid because he he committed these he committed these averis. He uh, he was part of these prohibited relationships. Rashi notes over here that the Gemara will discuss how Rabbi Yossi is different than Rabbi Yossi Haglili, and the Mishnah continues. Pasuk says that when the officers finished speaking to the people who fucked to sorry tzvos barosha um, it says that they would then appoint these officers. And the Mishnah adds uva kevo shalom that the back of the people ma'amidin zakifin lefneim ve'acherem achoreim. You have people, you have officers, officers who are standing guard in front of them and behind them. Uchshelin shel barzel and they have iron rods in their hands. 
and the point, why were they standing there? Because anybody who would try to retreat, so these officers, these guards had permission, they could hit the person, uh, they could hit the person on his legs, on his thighs, in other words, the point is they would stop them from retreating, they would stop them from running away, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Memdalid Amid Base.